Very good. Well, an enormous welcome to the Zoological Society of London. My name is Dominic Jermy, uh, and I am the Director General, um, and we are delighted um, that you are attending this joint conference here today. Um, we are really pleased that it is a conference on evidence to action, which is a collaboration between the Oxford Martin Programme on the Illegal Wildlife Trade, Biosec University of Sheffield, Lancaster Environment Centre, the Durrell Institute of Conservation and Ecology, and us at the Zoological Society of London. And we're a really diverse group of people who very much care about the subject of evidence to action on the illegal wildlife trade. And that is exactly what we wanted to bring together um, this week. So thank you very much for joining us, whether you are um, researchers, whether you're from NGOs, whether you're from government and policymakers, whether you are community representatives um, or members of the public who thought you were coming to visit the zoo, you are extremely <laughs> welcome. Um, as a science-based organization, uh, at ZSL, we really recognize the importance of robust evidence bases to inform understanding of the complexities of the illegal wildlife trade and to design from that effective interventions. Um, I was asked a few weeks ago by, by EJ, one of the um, absolute drivers of this conference, um, whether we at ZSL as an organization were really behind um, this conference and behind the drive against the illegal wildlife trade. And the answer is absolutely, of course we are. And the reason for that is that um, this is a trade of, we think, something like $23 billion a year, an illegal industrial um, uh, harvesting of wildlife. Um, none of us knows the exact extent of that, um, but it is absolutely pernicious, and it goes against everything that we and that you um, here today um, believe in, in terms of our work for conservation. Um, it is part of the catastrophic loss of biodiversity um, that we as ZSL have been monitoring um, in our Living Planet Index since 1970, charting a 53% loss of biodiversity um, in the species, the thousands of species that that follows. And IWT plays a completely <laughs> ignoble part in that charting. And so it is something that we as an organization are passionate about our commitment to do something to contribute to the elimination of this illegal trade. Um, and for that end, monitoring and evaluation of impact is absolutely crucial to ensure that lessons can be learned and shared, to ensure that we enable successful approaches to be replicated and scaled up, and that unsuccessful interventions are revised and ultimately lead to better outcomes. And that focus um, on understanding the impact of interventions can only happen if we are able to collaborate in cross-sector ways as government, as NGOs, as communities, as businesses, as other actors um, within this space. Um, and use reliable evidence to increase the effectiveness of what we do against the illegal wildlife trade. There are many debates around IWT. One that we were engaged in with DFID only last week is whether or not overseas development assistance can target conservation outcomes while also reducing poverty and promoting sustainable development. And it is hard to make that case in the absence of reliable and effective evidence. And when I talk to a policymaker and ask why does the UK spend 0.7% um, of its ODA commitment in ways that have only an incidental um, if impact on conservation outcomes, it's actually hard to sustain that argument when challenged to demonstrate that actually supporting conservation can have impact on sustainable development. The answer is more or less we don't know because the evidence base isn't there. And that is true in so many other areas. The actions and interventions we take in wildlife consuming markets 
um, the conversation I was having outside um, with a colleague from um, Cape Town University um, about whether or not military interventions had any impact at all um, on the survival rates for rhinos um, in South Africa, and what are the economic drivers around wildlife protection. Um, these are all the areas where we hope you, and in many other areas today, you are going to look at the evidence base and contribute to this debate. The main IWT conference this week is about politics, but it is politics that has to be rooted in evidence. Close observation of British politics over the last number of years might suggest that not all politics in my country is evidence-based. This will be a surprise to you, I feel sure. The challenge and opportunity we and the other organizations behind today's um, conference have set ourselves is to identify gaps in evidence, to see where we as a community together can fill those gaps, or to identify pathways in the future when they can be filled, to understand the unknown unknowns, and frankly, not to allow policymakers to make bad decisions this week or in the future because of any perceived dearth of relevant evidence. There may, of course, be other reasons why they make bad decisions, but not for want of evidence. And I think that um, we can use the political momentum around the IWT conference this week um, to inform the debate and to, uh, to not permit the debate around IWT to go ahead without evidence. And I think that is something that we're all committed to. I also think it is a moral responsibility to our donors as NGOs, to our taxpayers um, for whom, for example, uh, government money is spent on conservation outcomes, um, and frankly, to future generations um, who are not going to enjoy the biodiversity that we are able still to enjoy in our world because of the impact of the illegal wildlife trade. So, ladies and gentlemen, quite a task for us today. Um, let's get to it. And just before we do, I would like to thank on behalf of all the organizing committee, um, two people who've been absolutely instrumental in making this workshop conference happen, um, Matt Loughton and Laura Cunier, for enormous hard work and tireless efforts to bring this all together. And at this point, I hand over to your chair of the first session, Bob Smith, the director of the Durrell Institute. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed.